Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My student, welcome to this course. This course is Advanced Visual Basic.net, prepared by me. My name is Samah Muhammad Usman Hassan. I'm in a, a PhD holder in computer science with a lot of expertise in different kinds of programming like Visual Basic, Java, HTML, Python with good knowledge in data mining, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. This course is designed only for the people they already know or have a good background in basic concept of Visual Basic .NET. So they have to know how to declare variable, what is the data type of the variable, like string, integer, and all this stuff to get the benefit of this course. In this course, we play with arrays, loops, nested loops, looping backwards, and while loop, for loop, for each loop, for all this kind of loop, we give examples and tutorials, plus the different kind of conditional statement and different cases to use the nested if statement with a lot of tutorials and practical exam. I hope you all, you, I hope you will enjoy the course and learn the new things with me. Thank you a lot. See you in the classes. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, my student. My name is Samar Hassan. I am a PhD holder in computer science. I will be your instructor into this course. This course is about advanced visual basic.net. That means students, they are joining this class. They have to know the basic concept of programming in visual basic.net to get along and to get the maximum benefit of this course. I hope you will enjoy the course. Let us start. In our first lecture, we want to define the arrays. First, we'll start with the first type of array is called one dimensional array. Then we know how to assign value to this element into the array. Then we do some operation into the array. First of all, if you look here, you will see this is the array. I will use the cursor. This is the array here. It looks like a simple queue. So in programming, we have value, we want to save it in one place with the same name. For example, this name here is X. This is called one dimensional array. In Visual Basic, we'll start in the row by the index, this zero here we call index number of the element. In Visual Basic, the element start with zero, one, x of 0, x of 1, x of 2, and x of 3, x of 4. This should be x of 3. OK, guys? So this is our first array for one dimensional array. Have one, two, three, four elements in Visual Basic. So let us start and see how we will define this type of array in Visual Basic and how we'll assign this value for to x of zero, and how we'll do some operation into these arrays. So first of all, we'll go to Visual Basic and open it. I hope all of you, you know how to install Visual Basic and how to open it. I will start new project. I will select Windows Form application. I will change the name here for sake of saving. I will say array list, for example, or whatever. OK. I'll wait a second to open the program. Then oh, this is my form toolbox. In this type of uh, class, we'll just use one button and the small one list box. 
we'll keep it here. Okay, we'll chain the bottom for the two important properties as we all, I hope, know. Text will say okay. This will appear here. And we'll chain the second one is the name of the bottom. Instead of bottom one, I will write BTN okay. And we'll maximize our uh, farm a little bit. Okay, we'll keep the list box as list box one. Then we'll go ahead to the code area and maximize later to see it. Okay, now we're ready to go. So all of you, you know how to use dim to declare a variable in Visual Bit. Same way we'll use the word dim to declare X. Just I will use two parseness, open and close. And inside this parseness, I will write the number of elements I want into this array. Then as, then the, type, the data type I want to use into this array. So by this way, I declare X of two. That's mean the name of the array is X and two is the number of elements. So to make it clear for all of you here, two, this is the number, number of element into array. And if I ask you how many elements I have into this array, think. I, uh, the array starts from zero. Then that's mean I have zero, one, two. That's mean I have three elements into this array. And X, this X here, we call it, this is the name of the array. Okay, I hope it's clear. You have to specify the number of element into the array by this number two. If I write two, that means three element. If I write three, that means four element and so on. And X or whatever I write here, this is the name of the array, which I will access the elements through this name, as we will see now. So we'll start to assign first element. If we want to access the first element, we'll say X of zero, then equal say five. Then X of one equal say nine. Then X of two equal eight. Okay, this is one, two, three elements by the same name X, but different index, X of zero, X of one, X of two. And this is different value. I assign for each one of them. Now, can I do, can I see some of them? Yes, I can see them into the list box as we are using the list box one, but items, if you want to see anything into the list box, dot add the first one is x of zero then again list of one box one dot items dot add x of one then list of box list box one dot items dot add for the last element x of two then we are ready to go we have to close the parsons okay this is clear so three elements three text three add item to the list box then we we'll run to see run We we'll keep it here. Okay. Five, nine, eight. Simple and clear. 
Now, the second question is, can I do some operation into this uh, x of zero, x of one, or x of y? So I will declare variable here, same total, for example. Then down here, I will see total equal, say, x of zero, x of zero, plus x of one, plus x of two. Okay? So I declare another variable with the data type integer. I want to assign this variable to this variable. And I want to add this variable together using the operation plus. Then I want to see the result. I will see the result here. I will use the same list box. I will say total. Then I will stop this. As we know, in the, in the visual basic.net, we use a comment like this by single code. That means this code, it will never, this code, it will never run. So, simply I can delete it, but just I want to keep it there. Then start. We want to know how much it will come. Five plus nine plus eight. How much? Think. Then, okay. Is it true? If is it true, that means everything is go going okay. So we can declare another array. In this time, we want to have it as a string. That type will say dim. This time we call it str, also from three element as string data type. Then I will, the first one will be str of zero equal. For the string we're using the double quote, then inside we write the name, for example, add yield, then str one equal, for example, Mary or Ahmed, then STR, the last one is two equal Iman. So I have string from the data as str from the data type string i have three elements str0 str1 str2 by the same way i can see them here in the string in the list box str of 0 and I, you know why i am keeping this here if i want it i will use it if i didn't want it i will remove str of one, then str of two. Then we'll run, start. Okay, we came Hadil Ahmed Iman. So I hope everything now is clear. We can declare a one dimensional array from the type integer or from the data type string. We can assign different value to each element if it was a string or it was integer. We can do any operation for the data type integer and we can see or display the value of, this, of the array in the place we specify. Into list box, into text box, into label, wherever you are. So guys, I hope you understand how to declare the array and you enjoy the classes. See you next class. Goodbye. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, my student, welcome to the second class in advanced visual basic.net. Today we'll define the two dimensional array and we want to know how to assign value and retrieve value 
and how to do some operation into that array. So let us first of all see how the structure of the two-dimensional array will be. So if you see here, this is the kind of two-dimensional array. It contains rows and columns. Each columns have index and each row have also index. So I have here zero, one, two, three. That's mean I have four column and three rows. Each element inside the array, it will access by the name of the array is X and two index. Last time in the one dimension array, we write only one index because we have only one position. But here we have, we have to specify the number of row and the number of column. So the first element in this array is X of zero, zero. That's mean row zero, column zero. And the last one here is X of two, three. That's mean the second row, third column. Or actually the third row, the fourth column. So how many elements we have in this array is three, four, that's mean 12 elements. So in the two dimensional array, you have to be very clear with the definition and how you will reach your elements. So let us to start and know how to declare this type of arrays in Visual Studio.net. So we'll open. We'll use the same project as we did last class. We'll use only one bottom and the list box. We'll go directly to the bottom. We'll write our code. We'll use the same name, dim, as dim, and we want to name the, the array. Say, for example, this time we'll name it as, say, names, name and name of two comma two as string. Because it's name we call it. String. Okay. In this array, just guess how many elements we have. Whereas before we guess, we'll see here we have to notice for this one and for the second one here, what it represents. For the first index, this is for rows, the number of rows, how many rows I have. And for the second one here, this is the number of columns. How many columns I have. Okay, so here I have three rows, start from zero, one, two, and three column, zero, one, zero, one, two. That means how many elements I have? I have nine elements into this array. Nine elements into this array. In this array I have nine element. I have to be very care. And the name is the name of the array. Okay, so now let us start. We'll say name of first one is zero comma zero equal Double quote, Ahmed. Second one is name, zero comma one. That's mean equal Nazar. And third one is name, zero comma two equal
e help and name now i finish the first row i go to the second row one comma zero equal muhammad and name one comma one equal Selma name equal one comma two equal Nada and name equal one comma two. Now I finish the second row. Dina. Now I will start the last row is a row of two, two comma zero equal Mary and name of sorry two comma one equal Majid, Majid, and name the last one two comma two in the array is Suleiman. Great. So we have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of zero, one of one, one of two. We just repeat one of two here. This is wrong. So we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements. So simply we declare array from two dimension array, three of three. That's mean nine element. Then we assign each element each value to each element. Now we want to see some operation. Can we do, for example, if we declare, so we can see another string here, str, and down here we see str equal name, the first one of zero comma zero plus I will make a white space here because I didn't want them to be stick together. The name of, uh, so we'll select the second one, zero comma one. And we want to see this into the list box. We have list box, list box one dot items dot add we want to see the str there great okay i hope all of you with me i declared the array from two dimension array it's three multiplied by three nine elements then i add two elements together then i want to see the result into the this box so run okay so the first one zero zero is ahmed and the second zero one is nazar it came ahmed nazar that's perfectly correct so i hope it was clear for you how to declare same way i can declare the string from the data type integer as we did the last class so I hope it's clear how to declare the two dimensional array and how to assign the value and how to access or display that value. I hope you enjoy the classes. See you next class. Bye bye. Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. 
wherever you are. Welcome to the class. Today we'll learn how to work with a loop and what is the syntax of the loop and what is the start and the end counter of the loop. So for the loop, the syntax is for i equal zero, for example, two, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> four, then next. What does this syntax mean? This mean, this is the start of the loop. That's mean I want something in between to be repeated more than one time. If I want to, for example, write hello, just as a as simple string. And I want this to be repeated four or five or six times, I will use the syntax for. The simple syntax is I will write for, and there's a small i here is called counter. This i, we call it counter. Counter mean I will count how many number I will repeat this statement. And you notice I have two value here, zero, zero to four. Zero is the start position of counter, is a start point of counter. Let us make this uh, different color to be simple. For example, red, counter, red. And the four is the stop point of counter. What all this mean? That mean I will start from zero, one, two, three, four. I will never go to five. I will never go to six. That's mean I will start from zero to four. If I change zero, I'll say one. That means I will start from one. You have to notice from where I have to start. That means I will do the loop. I repeated the loop one, two, three, four. And whatever in between here, between the four and the next it will be repeated to how the number of counter from the beginning to the end. So let us try in Visual Basic. I'm using the same form. I just add a small bottom here. I called it try. Let us go to this try. I will declare the counter as i, and I will declare some other variable say w1 also as integer. I want to use it in the loop. Our syntax is for i, the counter, equal from zero, say to five, for example. Immediately you will see the next appear here. So in between this block, the start point and the end point, I will write whatever I want. It will be repeated how many times, guys? From zero to five. That's me, it will be repeated six times. So for example, if I say W1 equal I plus say two, then I want to see the result where in the list box, which I already have it, dot items, dot add, and how I will see that result, the result in the variable of W1, W1. Say, now we'll see how the value will be changed from zero, one, two, three. This va four value start I equal zero. I will want to change the cursor, you see? You see the red point here? First one will be I equal zero. Zero plus two. First result will be two. Second result will be one. One plus two, three. Plus two, two plus two, four. Three, three plus two, five. 
4, 4 plus 2, 6, 5, 5 plus 2, 7. I have to see six element or six results into our result. So let us see what will happen. Start and try. You'll see two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means six results. How it came? Zero plus two, two. One plus two, three. Three plus two, five. Four plus two, six. And the last one is five plus two equal seven. You have to be care about this. Now, if I change the starting point instead of zero, I will start from one. That means I will see five result. And I will see one plus two, I will start from three. And the last one will be five plus two, it will be seven. Then we'll see. Okay. You see, one, two, three, four, five results. Start from three, end by seven. I, have, I want you to understand this syntax very carefully. So guys, I want you to see the difference between the start point if I write from zero and if I write start from one. It will come with different results. And for example, if we want to do any operation here, I will, I will do it inside the loop, inside the block from the beginning to the, the end. I want to be very careful to, for this for syntax. And if I want just simply repeat some statement or any string, I will say w1, it is not an integer. I will say w1 here this time as a string, for example. And I will say W1 equal any name. They will say hello or welcome. And I want this statement to be repeated four or five or six times. So we'll see what will happen. Try. You notice here, one, two, three, four, five times it was repeated as just simple statement. I didn't do anything. So whatever I want to be repeated more than one time, I will write that simple part of code. If it was operation of send text, send string, display of message in between this loop. Okay, I hope you understand this simple syntax and enjoy the class. You have to try to understand it in your machine. I'll see you next class. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, my student, welcome into this class. This class will continue doing the loop. We'll do new techniques with loop with using word called step in the forward way, the normal way. And we have different kind of loop called looping backwards. So let us start. We'll open Visual Basic, new project, new form. Then this is our form here. Toolbox. From the toolbox, we'll take the bottom. We'll change the properties. We'll say, okay, bottom. Then we'll change the properties of the bottom name, BTN, okay. Then we'll maximize a little bit the font. It's very small, you can see it, very old. So maximize little from font properties. Make it bold, 11, okay, okay. 
good to go. So this time you can use, uh, let us keep the list box as normal. So symbol to use and clear to see the result. Uh, that's why I'm using the list box. You can use label, text box, whatever you want. So our bottom, okay. Maximize a little bit the screen to make all of you see. <clears throat> okay, then I will define i as integer and some array x of, uh, say, I will say five, or let us not use array, x of i as integer. Okay. So our loop for i equal zero to, we'll say 20. This is a normal. Let us use our list box, list box one dot items dot add. We'll add the i. Simple like this, we'll see the result first. Then we'll change it, start. This is normal uh, loop. This normal for, we print uh, from zero till 20. Okay, this is the forward loop. Now I want to, they are going zero, one, two, three, four. I didn't want it to go one by one. I want to jump to say, for example, the odd uh, two or jump three, or I want to just print zero, two, four, six, or zero, three, six, nine. So I will use the word step. Then here I will specify how many steps I have to jump. First to start, I will say jump two. Then take a minute, uh, start think about it, tell me the result. Start from zero, 20 stop point, and step two, okay? I know all of you, you get the result. Now we'll see the result. Okay, you notice here, zero, step two, four, six, eight. They never print three or five or seven. So there is a lot of value missing. I can change also step four. It can be start if I want to step four the number of value will be less because zero, four, eight, the jump is more or the bigger. This is the normal jump and we called it forward jump because I am going normally zero, one, two, three, four. Now I have different kind of jumping called back looping backwards. Backwards mean I have to come from the maximum number till the minimum number. So I have to change here I will say from 20 to one. This is, has to be minus, I will say minus two. Then how it will work? I know all of you, you know the result, 20, 18, 16, and so on. Then we'll say start. Okay, 20, 18, 16, 14, and so on. This kind of jump called backwards. Why backwards? Because I'm going backing from the maximum number until. So I hope all you understand what's the difference between step with the positive number and a step with the negative number. This is for integer. I can do also for, for example, if I have a array, I can define array here called y of three, for example, and I will give the y data here. There's another way for declaring the array. We can say y, parseness, say three means four elements. One, two, three, four. And we are ready to go. And this time, I will not use the step here. I will use the normal one from zero because all of you, you know that the array starts from 
y of zero. So two, the last one is zero, one, two, three. And here I want to add y of i. So let us see what we'll have in our list box. Then run. Okay. You see? Five, seven, three, eight. This is all the number we have in our string. If we have a string like this is y, I will define another array called dim str of three also as string. Then I will say str equal. This is the easy way to declare the array. I'll say A, make it short, double quote, B, comma, C, and end. Here I want to see str of I, then run. Okay. What's going on? It's saying some error came, let us solve the problem. Index was outside the bound of the array. Why? Because it will come zero, one, two, three. And I have how many element? Four elements. So what we'll do? So as we all know, the arrays here, I declare str of three. str of three means four element. Four element means one, two, three. We miss one element here. So we'll correct it. We'll say D. Now we are ready to go. Start and okay. A, B, C, D. You know all of you what is happening? Why the errors came? It came because when I declare the string here, I say three. Three means four elements, as we thought. That's mean str of zero, one, two, three. When he came here to run the for loop, he will find, he didn't find the value of x of c. So he will say that he's out of range of the array. Uh, some mistake like this is coming to make us to learn. We always love to learn from our mistake as a programmer. So I hope all of you understand the forwards loop and the backwards loop. Try it at home. If you have any question, you can ask me in the discussion part. I'll be happy to answer you. I hope you enjoy the class. I'll see you next class. Okay, bye. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, my student. Welcome to the class. Today, we'll speak about still we are in the loop. We have a special kind of loop called for each next. This is normally used when we have string. So let us start. This time we'll use our last form when we have the list box, small and a bottom. If you all remember the time we declare a string called name with two, two as a string. Two, two means three element and three element, and we declare it as a nine element there. So all of you remember this. Okay. And uh, this is our data, it's a string. Just we'll play with this data. To work with the for each, we have to declare str or any variable as to put all the data inside it from the array. So we'll do the same taxes for each, for each, in, for each what? For each str in, in what? In the string. 
name. What we want to do, we want to do list box. We want to add them to the list box. So we'll use list box dot items dot add. If you all remember before we take the loop, if we want to add all this nine, we have to do this statement list box one dot item dot add nine time. But now we are improved and we have more developed. We'll go through new techniques call for each with a string. Instead of repeating myself nine times, I will write the line only once and run what? Run the loop. So what I have to add here, the name, str. From where the question, from where the str will come? From the name. And what we have in the name? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, and so on. We didn't need this i, so we'll keep it as a comment. So what will happen now? We want to display these names into the list box using the loop for each string in name. So let us run. And OK. You see? All the names came together in one click. And just I'm using for each str in name. For each, also I can be used for a uh, integer. It's not just for a string, but normally you are used for the string. I can say for i as integer and comma say y of 2 as integer and I can declare y here, y equal 2 means 3 element, 3 comma 5 comma 7. Okay? Then instead of str, I will write i because of that is integer and I will say y. And here I will say i. Because I can use it for pose, for string and for the integer. So let us see. Simple. Directly it's k. So for each, it's a loop or it's a, a part of the loop like for from four, but normally this we use it for the string, but also can be used for the integer. So there's no problem for using both of them. Uh, it's simple statement. Uh, okay, guys, I hope you understand the concept of for each. It's very easy, very forward. And you will try it at home. And if you have any problem, please ask me in the discussion. I'll be glad to answering all of you. See you next class. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the class. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're all well and safe. Let us start our class today. Today, we still we are working with the loop. We'll have a new techniques with the loop called nested loop. For the nested loop, as I will show you here. For the nested loop, I have more than one loop, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Any number I want to be inside, it's available in Visual Basic. But now we'll take only the small the syntax is uh, just two loop. I have this syntax, if you see here, the first one is, it's all the same syntax for four. For i equal one to four, and next, inside I will write what I, whatever I want to be repeated, how many times. The second loop is for j equal one to five. And next, the first loop called outer block. That's mean the block start from four and into this word, the first next. The second block here, we call inner block. That's mean start from this four, and into this next. This nested loop, we always use it wherever you need it. Sometimes you need to repeat something more than one time in a different way or in different order. This syntax here now we use it while we use 
a multi-dimensional array normally. Today I'm using it with the two-dimensional array. I have two counter as you notice, I and J. I will be repeated four times. That's mean I start from one, start one, end to the four. J is the second counter for the inner blogger loop. Start from one, end to five. Okay, so this is the syntax and this is the counter for each one. And we write our code here into the inner block. So let us start with the visual basic. This time we play with the same array. We mentioned it before, we declare this array as a name, is a two dimensional array. We set all this data together. Now we want to display this array into this list box in the same order. To do that, I will use, first of all, I have to declare the counter dim i comma j this is the two counter i will be using as integer into the nested loop and then directly i will go here i start for i equal from this i will start from zero the first one zero two two and i am now still in the outer block now we go to the inner block for j this is the second counter have to be careful. Equal from zero to two. Then I will write the code here. I want each name display into the list box. List box. Our list box called list box one dot item. That's how I will add the item to it. Dot add. Then inside I will write name up in parseness, i comma j, then close, close. Okay, you understand this? The outer block and the inner block. The outer block starts from i, zero to two. That means we'll start zero, one, two, three times. Then the inner block from j start zero to two. This is for row and this is for column. Here we'll say name i of j. Then we'll see what will happen. If the nine will came or what will happen. Then run. Okay, perfect. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The nine value from the string data type array, it's all came while I am doing here. If I want to do this in the one single four, I will not say it is not be done, but it's little bit be difficult. But this is the easiest way to play with it. If I have three dimensional array, I will do with another nested loop inside here. I can do into, say for example here, I can do also another four, if I want or if I wish, or sometimes if you need. But this is a simple syntax for nested loop. I'm using with the array with the data type string. You have to be careful where the counter of the blogger outer will start and the counter of the inner blogger start. I hope you all understand the nested loop. I'll see you next class. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, my student, welcome to our class today. Today, we'll do some tutorial. Let us try what we learned till now. We'll try with array, loop, and display the value. We'll try to create small interface in Visual Basic to play with the for loop and the arrays. We want to know how we can use what we learned until now while we are designing any interface. First of all, we start a new project. Okay. We'll wait a second till the project is opening. 
I hope all you try whatever you did until now, like arrays and loop and defining the one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array. Whenever you work hard, you will get uh, more information and you can learn more. Whatever we give you, if you, are, if you are trying in home, that means you will get the benefit of this course. Just waiting and waiting and waiting or watching the video, this will not help you. You have to watch the video and you have to try everything at home, okay? So this is our first form here, our interface. We can first think for sake of a nice interface, we can change the background color from these properties, back color. Select whatever color you want. Let us start with this color, nice. I want to bring three, four label, drag and drop. And we can use the technique of control C, control V as normal copy paste for our label to then designing them, put them together in a proper way. You are a good designer. You want to, your design to be beautiful and we want to bring text box also for text box control c same technique one two three four and put them together also nice design perfect then we'll go to, we want to bring a list box, one list box, keep it here in the, this area, perfect. Then we'll go to the button. We always use button to make the user click on it. I will want two button, control C, control V. Nice. Then we'll start changing the name to make our interface more benefit. For this button, I will change the properties text. I will call it OK button, just like that. And for the second button, I say I want to call this close button. I want to close the form. And for the sake of the code, I have to change the name property into, because I have two buttons and I didn't want to get confused into between two of them. So I will say btn close. Then for the second one, I'll say btn okay button. Nice. Okay, guys, I hope you all with me. Then we'll go to the label, label one. I will not change the name because I will not use it in the code. I will change just the text. Here I will write ID. This will be the student ID. Here will be the name. And we'll say here will be the year of the student, which year is study, and which semester he is. Semester. Nice job. Okay. Then we can maximize all by selecting all of them. There's one property called font. Here, we want to maximize the font a little bit. I always prefer Time New Roman, bold, say 11. 11 is good, okay. Nice. Then I will go to the text box because I will use it in the, the code. I have to change the name of the text box properties because I didn't want to get confused between which one I'm using. Text box one, I will change it to 
txt id name to txt name year to txt year and semester last one is to txt semester just write same then we can maximize it little bit here copy all of them select all of them make them little bit down i want to bring one label here control c control sorry control z control c control v i want just to write into this label to make my interface nice and beautiful student information okay i'll keep it in the middle now if i want to check my design i will go to run first of all i want to see how my designers look like if i have to change something move right move left whatever then wait okay nice job see that information id name year okay perfect so we are ready to go now we start coding we'll go to the close button it's the easiest button And to this bottom, I will write maximize little because I have a problem with my eyes. I'll say dim, sorry. I will use the function close. All of you, I hope they all know that we are using a close button to close the form in the design, the running. Then I'll go to okay button. Here, my code will start here. First of all, I will define string array from the data type string i will call it x uh, i have four text box then i will have three here start from x of zero x of one x of two x of three zero one two three four element as string I want all of them to be from data type string. And I will declare a variable i as integer to make my loop working later on. And to the string, I will assign each value to this array to the text box. The first x of zero will be txt id dot text. Then the first, second value x of one equal txt name dot text. Okay, I hope you are following me. X of two equal txt here. If you are not following, you can stop the video and return back, start from the beginning, see what are going on or what we are doing. X of three, the last element in the array, equal txt semester dot text. Okay, now I declare array with four element. I assign each textbook to each element and to that. Now I want to display all of them because I want the user enter the student ID, student name, student year, and student semester. After the user enter them, I want them to be displayed into the list box, which I already have. So I will run with the four here. I equal zero, two, three. What I want to do, the list box, which I have, this box one dot items dot add what I want to add. I want to add 
the arrays x of i. Perfect. Now I am ready to go. So let us start. We'll see what's happening. Start. Okay, this is our form. We'll enter any ID, say 67. The name is, for example, Muhammad Ahmed. And he's in the second year. And he is in the first semester. Nice, then okay. You'll see the right side, the ID is 67. His name is Muhammad Ahmed. He's in the second year, first semester. Now, if you finish everything, we'll say close. Now our work is finished, perfect. This is our, a nice tutorial. I hope all of you, you try this tutorial. You attend the video twice or more if you like, then go open your machine, try to do this tutorial. If you have any problem, you can ask me in the discussion. I'll be happy to answer any question from you. See you next class. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you all safe and fine. Our lecture today is to declare what is meaning by conditions. Conditions mean something it has to be checked and it has to be true or false in the program. Like for example, if you see here, into this area while the red point here, if I say, between the parsonings, four less than five. Four less than five is simply a true statement. This type of statement in programming we call condition. The other statement is three is three greater than six. Simply the answer is false. For this statement, if it's true or false, there is dependency on that because I want all of you to know and understand when it became true and when it became false before we go to the if statement because it depends on conditional statement. And while loop and until loop all depends on the condition is true or false. And there's other more things I want you to add here. There's some operator called logical operator or an and. Or an and, that means I have to combine more than one condition together. I will combine them with or, or with and in the program. The condition, it has different way. So sometime if condition one is true, condition two is true. If I'm using first, I will take the first row. I'll speak about the or logical operator. The OR logical operator, it always simply, it always true if any one of the condition is true. If you notice here, condition one is true, condition two is true. Condition one is true, condition two is false, the result is true. Condition one is false, condition two is true, the result is true. So for OR, we can simply say or is always true unless all the condition is false. So if I have 100 condition and all of them fall, 99 of them is false, only one is true, the result of the logical operator or it will become true. For the AND operator, AND operator, if we notice here, all the states are false except when both the condition are true. 
So simply for AND, we can say AND operator is true only and only if all the conditions are true. So if I have 100 questions or 100 conditions, sorry, 99 of them are true. The one is false, the result will be false. For AND, I have to be sure all the condition results are true. So for this way, simply in our designing of the code, when we are speaking about the if statement in next classes, we can simply say if for, for less than five, we can use and and three greater than six. So someone told me now, is this statement, the result is true or false? Take a second, stop the video and think about it, if you want to answer. Now, to analyze this statement, simply we will say, this statement here, if four less than five, this statement is true. And three greater than six, this statement is false. So if I combine true and false, if I return back to my table here, true and false, the result is what? If I am using and, the result here is the result is false, okay? And if I change, if I change, instead of and, I write here, instead of and, I will use the logical operator or. Now, take a moment and think as still this condition and this condition. For the first one, the result is still true. And for the other one, the result is false. But in this case, our result will be different. Sorry. Our result will be different. Why? Because it's or. In or, we say if any one is true, the or is true. So, simple like that, you have to understand this table and understand the difference between using or and using and. I hope this is very clear for all of you, and I hope you all understand these details because we didn't want to return it this back. We will use it while we are working with the if statement and while statement. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy the class. See you next class. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope you all safe. Today, we'll speak about while loop. While loop, it depends on the condition. That's why last class we speak about the condition and how it came true or false. The simple syntax of while loop is here, as you see. It was do while, then the condition, write the code here and loop. And instead of next in the for uh, loop and for each, here we'll use the statement loop. So this is the condition. This condition must be I will just make it clear for you. This is the condition. This condition must be either true or false. There's no other option. It has to be true or false. While condition is always working until the condition became false. Or in other statement, while is working 
always all the condition as true or as long as the condition is true while it's working. Whatever statement you like from all of this definition, you take it, understand it, and work with it. While loop have a counter. A counter must be somewhere here. Counter should be here. If this is condition about the number, as we see in the example now in the visual bit. So let us start and make our while statement understandable. Okay. We'll open Visual Basic. I already have a small design with a small list box and OK button. So let us start in the OK button. I will maximize it a little bit. Here I want to define the counter i and some array with the type of a string. Array x of two means three element as integer. Then we'll see x of zero equal say seven, x of one equal nine, x of two equal five. Now I want to run the loop while the syntax is do while as you see here, do while it's came directly. The condition here, i less than three, then loop. I want to display into the list box I have, list box one, dot items, dot add. Then what I want to display, x of i. I have to specify an initial value for i to start from it and say i equal zero because the index, my index start from zero. So while this condition is true, this condition, it's i less than three. While this condition is true, the loop will be working. The counter, I will add it here. I will say i equal i plus one to increase the counter. Then we run. Okay. Clear? Seven, nine, five, the three number of the statement with the while loop. Now, if I change something in this loop, and I didn't want to write the x here, I'll say, for example, write will come. Just this statement inside the list box. I want to play with this i. I will say, if i start from three, for example, and less than seven, how many time you think this loop will be working? Or in other way, how many welcome statements will be appear in the list box? Think, I start from three, not from zero. I less than seven. Think, I think all of you, you get the answer. So let us see it. One, two, three, four. The question is why I start from three. That means three less than seven. Okay, it will work. Four less than seven, it will work. Five less than seven, it will work. This is the third time. And six less than seven, it will work. That means four times this while will be working. I hope you all understand how while statement is working. It depends on this condition when it came true and when it came false. 
while this condition is true, the while statement is keep running. While this condition is became false, the while statement stop working. Okay, guys, I hope you understand and you like this do while statement. I hope you will try it at home. See you next class. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our class today. Today we'll speak about conditional statement. The first statement is if statement. First of all, we want to know the syntax, the condition, and the else statement. As you see down here, this is the structure of or the syntax. As we mentioned before, this is if statement, if condition then this part is for if this condition is true as we explained before we the condition have two option even true or false so for if statement if this condition is true this part of the code here whatever i write in this part it will be executed then i have the word else, else mean this condition is not true. This condition result is false. So the second part here is for the code will be executed if this condition is false. Then end of the block by end F. I hope this is uh, simple and clear. This is a block, sorry. This is the if statement block. I have to keep a condition. This condition have two option, either true or false. If the condition is true, this part here will be executed. If this condition is false, this part will be executed. So let us start and see how this will be working in Visual Basic .NET. So we design a small for interface with two number, two text box, number one and number two and bottom. Here, what we want to do, we'll change the text box name just because we want to use it in our code. The name of the text box one will be txt number one. And the text box number two will be txt number two. And now we are good to go. What we want to do here? We want the user enter two number. When we click OK, we want the minimum number of the two. If number one is the smallest, we want him to return back. If the number two is the smallest, we want to see that number. So how we'll do that, we'll go to the code, we'll define two variable x comma y as an integer variable. Now we'll assign the txt number one dot text to the first variable and we'll assign y to txt number two dot text. But all of you, you know that from text to integer, I can't directly do that. So I have to convert this type of text by using the value method. This will convert the text here from text data type because text is text to integer or value can be work with it. So I'm using this function to do that. Then here I can start my if statement. I will simply say if x less than y, then here I will write then else. So I have two block. This is a block if true and this is a block if false. If true, 
just simply I want to show message box dot show to show me. So simply I will show X directly. And in this part, if the X greater than Y, that's mean the result is false. I want some message to appear here, not show. So for example, invalid data. Okay. So now after we declare the two variables, they are integer, we compare if x less than y, this is true, then the message will show here by the number of x. Otherwise, this message will be appear. So let us start. I will enter five and nine. In this case, number one is less than number two, then five should be coming. I will try again. This time I will write nine is here and five is here. Then the second message because nine is not less than five. So this is simply how the if statement have been working. I have to check the condition. If it's true, this part will be executed. If all the other part will be executed. I hope you understand the if statement syntax and you enjoy the class. See you next class. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, my student, welcome to this class. Today class will speak about nested if. What we mean by nested if? Nested if, it's something look like nested loop. Nested if is if inside another if. How this will be running? As you see here, the first if, this is the first block. This is the first block. And this is the insider block. We can call it outer block. And this is the insider block or the inner block. <clears throat> So in this case, in Visual Basic, we use if and else if. Here I have three parts I can write my code. First part, and the second part, and the third part. So I want to know where I can execute each one of them. For this statement, it has two options. And for this statement also, there's always two options. As we know, if this is the condition, it has to be true or it has to be false. Same thing for the other statement here. This it can be true or it can be false. So here I have four options. This condition can be true or false. And this condition can be true or false. So where I have to go? First of all will be in the first condition. We are here. If this condition is true, true, I will go to execute the first part and exit. I will not execute the rest of the code. And second option, if this condition is false, I will not execute this part. I will go directly to the else if statement. And I am here. Here in condition two, if this statement result is true, I will execute the second part. And if this statement is false, I will execute the third part. I hope this is clear. So we will repeat it fastly. Condition one have true or false. Condition two has true or false. If condition one is true, I will execute the first part. If it's condition one is false, I will execute condition two. 
If condition two is true, I will execute the second part. If it's false, I will execute the third part. Okay? Uh, it's look like very, I will not say very complicated. It's complicated, but if you understand it simple and clear, you will not find any complicated into this. And in the other way, uh, I didn't want you to make you confused. Let us try this, then we'll come back. So we'll go to Visual Basic. Okay. Okay. We'll go to Visual Basic. Here. Yeah. We are in uh, last form or interface with, with two number. This time I add small label here. I didn't want to show the result in message. I will show the result in this label. So let us see. I have two number, X and Y. I declare X and Y as integer. So here I will see if, before if, I will go to X equal, as we did before, number one, txt number one dot text equal, sorry, and we'll use what we use, value method, then y equal value method, txt number two dot text. Why I did this? Because I want to change the text value, the text to the value. Value means number. Now here I can start my nested if. I will write if the first condition is if x less than y, then If x less than y, then label, label three. I want the results shown in label three, not in the message, but text equal x. Else if, else if, if y less than x, then what will happen? label three dot text, I want to have y value. Else, if neither one or two, that means the third part, the third part here, I want to write in label three dot text equal, say, wrong number, for example, okay? So let us try this. This is the first condition, and this is the second condition. I have two value x and y. X come from the text, first text, and y come from the second text. Now run. If I enter eight and nine. Now number one is less than nine. That means here I have to see eight. Great. Now, if I change seven and nine. Now, the maximum number here is, is number one. So, no, sorry, I want uh, Y to be the smallest one here. Okay. Then, okay, seven will come. Now, for example, if I did both of them equal together, it's not equal, it's not less than or greater than. I did mention equal in the condition. So in this case, we'll go directly to the third part. We we'll write wrong number. Okay, I think this is clear because I didn't write less than or equal. I write just less than, X must be less than and Y must be less than. If I put x equal y, that means this condition is false, and false, it will go to third part directly. 
okay? I hope this is uh, simple and clear and all of you understand this lesson today. If you have any question, I will be glad to answer you. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the class. Our class today is about select statement or select case. Select case is a part of the conditional statement in different way. So sometimes I have more than one option and I want to do uh, some statement or some execute some code depends on the selection of the option. For example, if we see in this syntax here, first of all, we'll check the syntax. The syntax is select case. Then I will write my option here. Then case, option one, case, option two, case, option three, and end select. That means if I select the first option, I will execute the first statement and exit. If I select the second option, I will execute the second statement and exit and so on. So let us start and try to look how this will be working. So in our case, we'll use our form from last one. This is our form. We just put a small label. And this label will ask the user what day you like, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. Whatever day he enter here, we'll show it into the message. So for this text box, I will just change the name of the text to make it easier for us, txt day. Then we'll go to the code. Okay. Here, we'll define our selection or our option into, for example, array. Array called days. We'll start by only the first three days as string. Then we'll def define the days or our array simply in a normal way. Days equal parseness. It's for the string. The first day is Saturday. And the second one is Sunday. And the third one is Monday. Now this is our array. Two means three elements, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Now we'll select our case. Select. Case, case what? Case days. Depends on the days, I say case, if I select days, I can write it by the na uh, name of the variable. I will write here, message box dot show Show me what, show me what you select, day zero. Day of zero. And case, I select days. Or I will make it simple to myself here, I will write, if I select here, my first option will be Saturday, my second option will be Sunday. Sorry, oops. Control V, Sunday, and Monday is the last one. Control C, Control V, sorry, what's happening? What is this? 
Control C, Control V. Here I will write message box day of zero. That means you select Saturday. Message box here, Control C also. I don't like to write here. And here, here zero one, here zero two. Okay. I think there is a column here or something. We see str, for example. Well, here, comma, str as string. This is our options. Okay. Now we'll try to run. Now we are ready to go. Okay, now here we define our array with three elements. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. This should be Monday, sorry. Monday. And here is Monday also. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Just so look like together. Then where the user enter his selection? The user enters the selection in this form, form two. What we call this text. This text we call it txt day. So I have to sign the str value to the option txt day dot text, which is the user will be enter. Now I am ready to go. If the user selects Saturday, I will show Saturday. If select Sunday, I will show Sunday. If select Monday, I will show Monday. So now we are ready to go, start. This is our farm. What day you like? I like Monday. So, okay. Monday, I like Monday. If, uh, what you like? Maybe someone will like Sunday, then okay, Sunday. So by this way, I have different options. I have three, I can have more, four, five, six, whatever I want to play with. I can write it different, different case statement. And we can play also with integer instead of uh, strings or name, you can declare any type of integer you want. So I hope you understand the case, the select case statement. And if you have any question, please ask me in the discussion part. I'll be happy to answer you. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to our class today. Today, we have another tutorial. Let us try what we have been learned. Now we'll try to do something with the F statement related to the program or interface design. So let us start and try. We open a new project in Visual Basic with two form. Okay, this is our form, our properties. So this is the first form. For this tutorial, we need two form. So how to add a second form, right click into the project, add, select Windows form. It will come form two and add. Now I have two form, form one and form two. I will make form one the main point to start of the project. From where I will do that, I will go right click, properties, start up form, I'll select form one. Now I am ready to go. In form one, I will select two label, label one, 
and label two. Okay, and two text box. Text box one and text box two. Right. Then one button. Button one. Or two button. Control C, Control V, it will make them look like together. Then I will select all, make it maximize, font maximize, Time New Roman, bold, we'll select 11, okay. We can change the color, background color, to differentiate between our form. This is the start form. And for second form, we'll change also the color. Back color, we'll select different color from here, say blue. For the second four, we need only for this moment, just bottom. We don't need more than this. We return back to the form one. And to label one, I will change the text as user name. We want to start up interface for our project. Normally it's came with username and password. We want to learn how we'll do this. Password. Okay. We'll make it uh, nice. Look like, okay. Button one. This one, okay, if anything. And this for cancellation, if you want to cancel or want to close. Cancel. Okay, now for the button, okay, we'll name it as normal because we, want, we didn't want to get confused between the two bottom while we are writing the code, BTN, okay. And for the other one, we called it BTN, Council for the text box, the first one with the username, we'll call it txt name. And for the password, we'll call it txt password. Nice. Now we are ready to go to the code. One more thing into password. We didn't want to see the result into the password. You see the properties here, password character. We'll put the asterisk because I didn't want why I'm writing the password. It has been displayed. So I will go okay. Here we'll start by declaring two variable, dim user name comma password as string mean as string data type string then i will specify special value for the username i will say equal for example eman and password equal One, two, three, four, for example. Now I want to check, I will use if statement, if where the user will get the username and password in the first textbook, the first textbooks is called txt name dot text equal, has to be equal what? Equal Iman. 
Now we want to have two conditions. The second condition is a password. So I have, and it has to be both of them is correct. I can't take the username correct and the password is false. So we return back to our evaluation. Both of them, they have to be true. Then I will use and or or, think about it. I will give you a second to think. I will use definitely and because I want both of them to be true. TXT password dot text equal the password is one, two, three, four. Then in that time, if it's happened and everything is true, I want to open the second form. Second form called form or the second interface called form two. To open any form, I will use the method show form. Otherwise, I will write else. Otherwise, what will happen? If the username or the password or both of them are wrong, I can't show the form. I can't enter the system. Then I will show a message, message box dot show. I will say to the user, you enter, you enter wrong or invalid username or password. One of them are wrong, so I can't allow you to enter the system. We'll go just for form two design. We go here into the bottom one. We'll change okay. And just we want to close after we open it. What we use for close the form, we use a function close. Now we are ready to go. Start. This is our form, startup form, login. The username is Iman. And the password is 1234. You see the password is coming? It does not appear because we select change the properties of the textbook. Then, okay. I am ready to enter the second one. But I want the login to disappear after I open here. Then I see, okay. Then if I try different name, for example, if I enter uh, Ahmed and the same password, I'll say, okay. You see what happened? You enter invalid username or password. So if I enter correct username and password, we'll open the other form. If I enter any wrong data, username or password, it will show me the third message. You enter invalid data. And this type of form, we call it login form. We will normally use it in the startup of the system to check who want to open this system or not. I hope you understand the class. I understand uh, this tutorial. If you have any question, please ask me in the discussion part. I will be happy to answer your question. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.